Um, where are we? Right, d just jump outside, Jen. Um, we didn't. What I'm going to do? I'm going to I'm going to do a full the next Harley board or central board. We'll probably use Harley's prefer. The next Harley board installation. We're going to show you the full installation from start to finish. Um, we didn't on this one for various reasons, and I know some of you will be disappointed by that, but um, it's just the way it is. So because I was trying to earn the wage as well, and sometimes we need to crack on. Um, it's Hardy VL, it's Amprosite, it clicks together, it's a tongue group board, cement fibre board, so it's fire, fire resistant as well. And it's got them clip on corners, which makes installation a lot easier, um, a lot easier than um, the other, um, what they called, can't remember what they're called, Jen. If you use them on the corners, the clip on corners basically are a lot easier. Right, the, the returns, what we do on our returns, we use um, Amprosite. Soffit, it's a soffit board basically, rather than cutting these because they don't look very nice little cuts like that. So we have one full Amprosite trim around there. But like I say, I'm going to show you the full installation on that. The building's nearly finished now. We should be finished today. There's just a few little bits and pieces. Um, we're going to do the laminate floor today. And David is going to install the skirting board, aren't you, David? Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, so this flooring that we're fitting, um, customers chose this one, it's Gladstone Grey, I believe it's called. It seems to fit this a lot. Um, basically what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down and I'm going to fit the boards, show you how to fit it. Um, I'll show you how I fit it anyway, and we'll see if we can get it fit before John arrives, although I don't think we're going to. Right, it's a click together flooring. I'm going to have to put my glasses on for this. If Jen comes here, look, she'll see. It's got a little blue insert in there, and then when it goes together, it clicks together nice. So what I'm going to do is just try and get that first board. Can I have half a board, David? Yeah. There, you see how that's gone in like that, yeah? It's clicked together nice. So what I prefer to do is do two rows at a time. Um, it just makes my life a little bit easier as well. So David's going to cut me half a board. I'm going to start there. There's two ways of doing this. You can have your joints all in brick form, I suppose you might call it, um, in a brick pattern. So you'll have half a board full board, half a board, and all your joints will run through. The problem with that is it costs you more in the flooring because um, your wastage doesn't work out the way it's supposed to. So what we do is the off cut over there, we'll go over here and the joints will be staggered. Um, there's, like I said, there's two ways of doing it. It doesn't, I, I don't actually like it when it's in brick form, when it's in a brick pattern. Um, but like I say, I'm waffling at her. Right, David's gonna cut me off board. Somebody cuts me off a board, I will then be able to proceed what they tell you to do is leave an expansion gap, but if Jen sees there, she will see that we have got at least 15, 20 mil under the plasterboard. Um, what we like to do, because these are a timber frame building, I put that heater on, haven't I? Like I said, they are a timber frame building, and they will move. So what we do, the, the manufacturers often say anywhere between a 6 mil and a 10 mil expansion gap, that's what they say. Um, I believe it's a 10 mil on this one. But we've also got the added benefit of having another 12 and a half mil under there for that to slide under. Now, what they also tell you to do and all is measure the depth of your room, work out your board so you're not left with a little sliver over there. I've never once done that, I've never fell foul from it, um, which probably maybe today I will do. Um, but that's it. And, and packers and all, they tell you to put packers on the well, side. Yes, please, David. Um, packers on, on, the, on the side there to hold that 10 mil off the wall. I've never ever bothered with them either. These modern day laminates, they go together that easy. You don't actually need to do that. Um, what I'll do is once I've got three rows down, I'll put all the packs of laminate on top of the floor um, and we'll go from there. So did I say David's going to skirt this? Uh, second thing to remember and all is packs sometimes vary in shade. So what you need to do is open a couple of packs at the same time and work from a couple of packs. And then what you're not going to be left with then is um, different, like, you know, like a block of shade there and a block of shade there. It'll be mixed in quite well. Two minutes, David, and I'll give you... I'll give you it now, actually. Um, you can see John's connected the internet up there. He'll talk to you about that when he comes. 270, please, David. Piece just you can do, mate, yeah. 270, please. Um, it, he's connected the internet up there to the house internet, so that means that we've got the same speed in this room as the customer has got in the house as well. But he'll explain that to you there. Um, what else have we got? We've got TV on the wall. Um, we've got brush plates on there as well. If Jen can show you that little draw card, John's left a bit of one mil cable in that wall there. 
Um, so what will happen there is you'll get an HDMI lead on there. It'll pull it up and it'll come out behind the TV and that'll plug into a unit down on there. So there's no cables visible, which is what we aim for and all. And if you have a look over here as well, you can see there he's done very much the same thing with the power cable for the heater. It's gone in the wall and it's coming through the back of the back box, which provides a nice finish. Um, no trailing cables, that's what we like to see. So if you can see here, look, Jen, I've got my tape measure tight at wall. I'm reading 923 there, so I'll ask David to give me 913. The skirting board will cover the expansion gap, and we've got loads. Let's go on then, 913, please, David. So, what I'm going to do now, when I get this one down, I'll get this next one down off David now. I just want a little tap in like that. And then I'll just check my gap at the back, which, you see, it's not moved. That's why I don't bother putting packers in there, look. It's gone down nice, yeah. I've still got my expansion gap under there. So as soon as I've got that little piece in there, what I'll do is, in fact, I'll do it now, put a couple of packs on the floor, and it'll stop the floor from moving. And I'll have to check that again then. Just adds a little bit of weight on it. Um, what else is there to see? Um, Go on, Jen. Are you going to talk about the, the I've, I've said that already, yeah. yeah. Um, what else can we do on this, y'all? Right, what we're going to do, David's going to fit the skirting board. Um, when Jen first started, was it last? Two summers ago, ish, won it, yeah? Um, if some of you might remember, we had a scribe off, so what we did, we all got a bit of skirting board, we all had a different tool to cut the scribe on it, and we cut them with them, it was just a bit of fun, cost a bit of a few people to get upset that we're using a chainsaw on it, but like I say, it's a bit of fun. We're going to do the same again today, we're going to scribe some skirting boards with different tools, and see who can come up with the best scribe, just for a bit of fun. Um, the doors as well. Somebody commented that um, if they were the customer, they wouldn't be happy the way I chucked them doors in. Well, I can assure you, if you watched my videos before, them doors have gone in exactly the same way. They always do. Uh, you can do if you can see it. Right, so have a look at this first. Just one minute. Right, so what they want, they don't want anything less than 300 on your joint. Can you see there, I've got about 270 from there to there. So what I'll do, I will save that piece there. I'll drop another board in there. And then again, I can then do me two rows at the same time. Which, this speeds the job up a little bit, I suppose. Right, Jen, you can show on the glide. So for all those that thought I threw them in, the doors have gone in exactly the same way. They always would have, just a little bit faster. You can see the glide on them, nothing wrong with them, absolutely beautiful. And don't forget, I might have mentioned it a couple of times, we have been nominated for the Yorkshire Choice Award for the most charitable business. So if you'd like to go in the description and vote for us, um, John Unwin set up a GoFundMe so that you could pay for a table for us as a bit of a thank you for everything we've done, which we really appreciate. So it's surpassed that. Um, the table is paid for, so we're definitely going, but we'd like to win it, so if you could put a vote in, that would be good. Do you want a measurement, David? Um, 271, please. what David will do now, he'll give me that measurement there. Um, Jen's moving the Wi-Fi for me so that I can get the measurement on the next one as well. I'll just write that down there. Um, what else is there to tell you? Thank you. What else is there to say, Jen? Um, yeah, grass on the roof. We've asked to turf this one. Um, we will show you up there. We need to nip out and buy a little brush to agitate that, don't you? And send it up. We've forgotten to do that, haven't we? Yeah, you can do if you want. Um, so, Jen is having a birthday soon. 
and I have promised her I will make her a cake. 11.85 please David. So, not having made a cake before, I've had a dummy run. Because I want it to be right. So we've had a dummy run, it's three layers thick. Might look a bit crude at the moment, but trust me, when this cake's finished, that's the dummy one, so that'll get it today. But when the cake's finished, she's gonna have a little garden room. Oh, that is the plan anyway, isn't it, Jen? Right, so, I'm not gonna bore you any longer. I'm gonna crack on and get this floor down. Um, and when we come to the last bit over there, I'll drop on and show you. But basically, that's it. Off cut going over there, work as way along. Get his underlay down. We're using this foam back underlay. Yeah, it's a couple of mil thick, maybe two mil thick. And it's moisture, it's a moisture barrier as well. So you've got any issues with any kind of moisture coming up, it's not going to damage the floor whatsoever. Right, the laminate floor's down. So there you see, look, I didn't bother measuring from the back, I never do. Um, but that's how the end pieces fit there, look, it's nice. We've got a 10 mil expansion gap there. Um, we are going to put a bit of quadrant over that. Can you see it now? There's a 10 mil there, I can get my finger down it, yeah? Yeah. Quadrant's gonna go over that. Um, you notice the pattern, the customer actually did actually come out and ask me to do it, the, the, um, the pattern. So we end up going out and buying another pack of floor, because as I said, there's more wastage on there. Davey's fitting the skirting board. Um, it's primed MDF, he's using the liquid no-nails. I'll show you that in a minute once he's finished there. And he's gonna put a full bead down there, and then he's gonna fix it with that. I passed a lot of I am, um, what is it? 18. F18. Um, again, the brads, the stainless steel, simply because that's what we use for the cedar, so we just stick with them rather than having two different types. So when you're skirting a room, room, when you're skirting a room, um, this is where I do it anyway. I start with the biggest wall, I put a full piece in just as Davey has there. But he's, like I say, he's, he's, he's used this here, look, instant nails, it's from Tool Station, it's about maybe four pound a tube, no, I'm not sure. Uh, and now he's going to nail it. He's, but what he's doing, he's pushing the skirting board down to the floor because... Go on, yeah, go on, David. Because, of course, we've got a foam underlay on there, so we don't want any gaps under it. That one. That's fine, David. The problem with the F18, it's not angled, so you can't actually get into the corner. Lift that up, David. Right, can you see there? Look, he's pushing that down, Jen. Just let take your weight off it, David. There. So he's going to push it down to the floor when he fixes it, and he's going to double pin it. And he's going to work his way down and do that for the full length of the room. Right, so that's the square piece on. That's nice and easy. What he'll do now, he's going to do his TV wall next. Um, and he's, going to, he's already done a scribe on that corner, but I'll show you that going in, and then I'll show you how to do a scribe. Um, you don't... Oh, how can I put this? Yeah, if, if your room's not a, a true 45, so, like, you, you, you should never mitre uh, uh, your internals corners on your skirting board because it's going to open up that's not the way you do it you scribe it so you put a full length in like that and then you scribe the end but i'm going to show you how to scribe the end and show you why we scribe the end as well so if your room's not 45 when 45 degrees like that one is when you put that scribe on there it doesn't matter if it's bigger or smaller the scribe will still conceal the um the corner basically i didn't explain that very well did i yeah it, you'll, you'll you'll understand it more when it's going down but he's working his way along there um i'm you're pushing it down and nailing it. Right, so he's, he's, cut, his, he's cut his scribe on this. I'm going to try and explain this to you the best, best way I can. Right, let's imagine there now. We've got a 40... Look above there, look. You see they've got 45 degrees there, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, so if that goes on there now, so he's back cut that, and then that will go there like that. Can you see that look, yeah? Yeah. Right, so if I extend it more than 45 degrees... There, can you see there now? Look, I'm more than 45 degrees. Yeah. Look above it, you better see it better. Yeah. Yeah. Or less than 45 degrees as well. Yeah. So the scribe works for everything there. And that's how you want to be doing your internals rather than cutting a 45 and a 45 and sticking it together because it will open up and you'll have a gap. Um, but I am going to show you how to do that as well. And you can see there it's back cut. Can you see from there? Yeah. Yeah, it's back cut. And the reason why it's back cut is so that. If that's not a true 45, you can actually move it, yeah, when you've got your skirting on there. And that will that will account for any angle, basically. So he's good at that. Um, he's going to glue and fix that now. And of course, John's going to go around with cork and filler as well. Um...
Right, so he put his back piece on with two square cuts, yeah? He's put that wall on now, he's, he's scribed that side there, but he's put a square cut there as well, because obviously what we're going to do now, he'll put this piece in and scribe that piece there. We've got an external miter right there, but we'll talk about that in a minute. So what you want is you scribe, square piece, then come back on there, scribe, square piece if you're returning, or external miter there. Um, right, so what we'll do now, we'll leave them till last. Um, he's then going to drop on this other wall here as well, and we're going to show you how he's cut that um, scribe on there, basically. So what he'll do, he'll measure the wall, he'll, he'll add on 100 mil, say. And the reason why he's adding on 100 mil is because he, until he's cut that scribe, he can't measure that skirting board properly. Here's that, David, I'll, I'll plug that in over here. So what he'll do, he'll measure the wall, he'll add on 100 mil, and then what he'll do then, he'll go outside, he'll cut a piece of skirting board with a mitre on it, 100 mil longer than what he actually needs. Now, he's, he's been super cautious there. Um, we've got three lengths of skirting board and we don't want any wastage, but the reason... Right, but what, what I would do is... Let me just jump out of the way. What did you get? Three. Three, one, twenty, I think. Right, so what I do, I just go like this. <laughs> three point two. And add on, yeah, you don't, David, yeah. because you, you, you're only cutting a mitre on it, you know, you've got 80 mil to play with there, you're not going to bolt it up, so yeah, 3.2. Yeah, yeah, let's get outside and watch him do it then. So, um, I'll hold, he's going to measure this bit of skirting board here. Yeah, I'll hold this empty, David. Um, we've left the saw stand. We don't actually know where we've left the saw stand, do we? Uh, so, the stand for the saw is somewhere unknown yet, so we'll have to find that. Right, three, two, yeah? Okay. Right. The end there where he's marked that, that will be the end that meets the back wall. So he's going to put a 45 on that now, aren't you, David? Yeah. I can't see your line, David. Well, line's about there, so... Really? It's upside down. So it's fine. Just... So he's going to send the mitre to me. Yeah. Are you on 45, David? Yeah. I didn't hear it click. Did it click in? Yeah, sorry. Yeah, it's in now. Right, is it flat on the bed? Right, it's important that it's flat on the bed. If it's not flat on the bed, you won't get a true 45. Have you put them on, Brandon? Yeah. Right, so the skirting board's flat on the bed. If it's not flat on the bed, you're not going to get a true 45. So off you go, David. <laughs> Yeah, right, Jen has a look at that now. So, if you imagine this, that's the back wall. Yeah, that's the, yeah, go on then. So that, that's the back wall, that's the mitre. Right, so he's cut a 45 degree mitre on there. So what he's gonna now do is use that line as his guide and he's gonna get rid of all that brown. But the thing is, what he'll do is, he'll probably cut that across there like that because you can't actually cut that thin enough to sit on top of that skirting board, if that makes sense, because it's MDF and it turns to like paper. So that will be cut like that. That will get corked and that'll look beautiful. So he's gonna back cut that now. David's choice of weapon is the flappy disc. I don't like the flappy disc. Go on, go show on the flappy disc, Jim. Do you want an arm, Brandon? Um, it's a sanding disc, basically, on the grinder. It kicks up a lot of mess, but he does prefer this, so I'll leave him to it and let him do it. Okay. Right. Try it, yeah. Yeah? Right, camera on him. Are you happy with that, David? 90%. Right, so what he's gonna do now, right, he's gonna try he's 90% happy with that. So he's got a little off cut there, he's gonna hold that up into place and see how it looks. Uh, it still needs a bit out at the top. Right, explain why, David. Why, why does it need a little bit out at the top? Because it's protruding at the bottom. Right, exactly. Because <laughs> you see it's sticking out just a little bit there, so yeah. that means just move that finger, it needs a little bit more out of there. That's what he's saying, isn't it, David? Yeah. yeah. But all in all, pretty spot on. Yeah, just don't put that on there yet, David. Right, you've been doing, Jen. Yes. 
Yeah, right, so he's cut his scribe, so he can now actually measure and get his length of his skirting board exactly right. Now, I've just measured it for him. It's 123 inches in old money. So he's going to stick that on there, Davey, aren't you? See, now, what he's done, he's hooked that on there, which means, right, that... that because that, that's where he's taking his measurement from this bit of skirting that goes there. Like, I'm going to explain the tape measure in a minute to you as well. The push and pull on the end there, because um, some people don't know. 123 inches, Davey, yeah? Right, so he's going to cut that square, obviously. And that will be lovely then for going in there. Is it flat back to bed, Davey? I've just twisted it on you then, sorry. And if I've measured that correctly and I had balls it up, Davey's going to put this in now and it's going to fit like a bloody glove, isn't it, Davey? Let's go have a look. Drum roll. What he's done there is flexed it in the middle, look. I might have made this a little bit tight. Ah, right, so this is a good thing I can show you now. So, um, is it pushed back there? Right, you can see there now. So what's happened there, look, is the skirting board on the back wall. Can you see the gap at the top, Jen? Yeah. So the skirting board on the back wall is slightly um, not plumb, it's just slightly, ever so slightly. So what I'm going to need to do now is just run that up there like that to nothing. Just take it back out, David. I might actually better cut this off with a Stanley knife. Um, because he's back cut it, I'll just explain something to you now in a minute. See how careful he is, look. See that, Jen, how careful he is. Right, because he's back cut it, no, I probably can't actually, it's too much. Let me try. Can you see that line there? Yeah. That, that's because the skirting board, let me tell you, it's like that. Yeah. yeah. Um, might not be able to do it with the knife to it. No. Right, let me get my block plane out and I'll just show you it coming off. One minute. Just follow me over here, Jen. Yeah, well, I'll put on that trestle for me, Davey. Oh, this has seen better days. Where are we? Right, come over here, Jen. Right, so what I'm going to do now is get this rusty plane out of my box that cost me over 200 quid. And just take, take that off. Can you see it coming off, look? And I think that, that should go in now and that should be fine. Stick that in, David. Let's have a look at that. I probably was a bit generous with my pencil line. That's sorry, with my pencil line. Okay. Yeah. Right, so that'll get fixed after breakfast. And then we'll show you him do external mitres as well. And we're going to put the bead on the front as well, because I know a lot of people ask us how we finish on this door. And there'll be a bit of quad going on the front of there. So he did the back wall first, then he did the two side walls. So your back wall goes on with two square cuts, two square cuts. Then he did the side wall, scribe, square cut scribe mitre same as what he's done here look so he's put a scribe on over there on that joint you see me take the bottom off that with the block plane because it wasn't sitting right and what he's done there look he's got a scribe on that which goes into that square piece that'll be nice there and he's got his little mitre there these have got an upstand on these doors as have most um so it just needs a little bit notching out but what you have to be careful is that you push it down enough to get the floor down like that yeah and it sits in place like it should he's gonna then magic mitre that yeah, magic miter it, pin it, sand it, and John will go along and fill it. And then I'll show you this quad going on, which is pretty much the last thing to do. Um, I'll just show you this TV. John's just fit the customer's TV for her. Um, we always, like, no matter what height we put the TVs at, somebody will always complain on YouTube that it's at the wrong height. Customers generally choose the height. We don't just randomly pick it. But you can see there, we've hid the sockets behind the TV at the height. If you watch the, the series of videos, you'll have seen... Um, I think it was Jen or Davey, who, who put the patrices in? 
first. Yeah. You I did it first and then did it. So Jen put them in first. The customer decided they wanted telly low, so we had to take them back out and re-put them in lower to take the TV and to allow our sockets. So you see there, you can't see the sockets. That's what you want. You don't want no trailing cables. Just like there, look. HDMI cable in a brush plate goes up the wall and out through the back and fixes to the TV. Uh, connects to the TV, rather. So the customer will have some kind of TV unit here. This is what she's told us. And that will plug into whatever device she's got, whether it be Xbox or PlayStation or what else would it be? Skybox, anything, anything like that. Yeah, all hidden, looks nice and tidy. Same as the heater cable as well. The customers chose these um, stainless steel brush socket first plates as well. Um, what else is there to tell you? Um, so we're going to put the quad on. We've recessed the consumer unit. Customer wanted us to recess it, so we've recessed that. We might actually go forward with recessing them like that because we like the look of that. The nice little detail on there. It wasn't too hard to do, and I still maintain the 50 mil insulation behind it, which um, on the front wall is possible, but on these side walls it's not possible. Right, so what we're going to do now, get this bit of skirting board on, get the quad on. I'll show you the quad going on. Um, we're going to clean the building, and then we'll give you a walk around and talk about everything as well. So you've obviously need an expansion gap when you fit your floor in. So the expansion gap there is 10mm um, and we need to cover that. So what we're going to use is just a bit of this quad. I'll just show you it on. That's what it looks like on. Can you see it any good? Yeah. So that's it on. So basically it's just a plastic PVC quad. Um, and what, what Brandon will do rather, he's going to get some of this glazing tape. It's double sided. He'll put it on the top side like that. Spin everywhere. He'll put it on the top side and then what he'll do then is peel the, the yellow off it so that's sticky now yeah and then that will stick to the door frame there not the floor because we want the floor to be able to move so let me pull that back off so that will stick like that to there to the frame to the sill and then the floor can still move backwards and forwards if it needs to um, and what we'll do then is put a little bead of silicon just along the top of there because with it being a garden room you do get condensation build up in the winter months and sometimes moisture can go down there it'll go down there and it'll take the seal off so it wants to be the silicon just across the top of there but i've pre-cleaned that he's going to clean that down now and like i said he'll put the tape just on the top on the top um, profile there and he'll stick it tight and I'll also push the floor down at the same time then the floor can move backwards and forwards so that's how you finish your floor right so we're gonna have a little play with these um, scribes a little bit of a scribe off really so to scribe it you need to cut a 45 back on it first um, traditionally you use a coping saw and what you could have done then is rather than using a hand saw is set that and cut the back off that one To do half the work for you. I've put my glasses on because it's going to look a dog otherwise. I snapped this last time, didn't I, Brendan? And then that's what you're trying to achieve, yeah? Okay, um, so coping saw, that is the traditional way of doing it. Who's off next? Brandon, what are you going for? I'll use jigsaw. Brandon's going to go for jigsaw. It's got a fine cutting blade in it. it. Yeah, move them, will you please, Jen? You good? Yeah, it'd be alright. It came off a bit more earlier than Let's have a look then. Yeah, right, so that's Jigsaw with fine toothed blade on it, micro blade really. Davy, what are you going for? Yeah, Jen, we'll just grab that really then, film Davy, please. Davy's going to go for flappy disc, he likes flappy disc. Which side do you want, Davy, left or right? Um, yeah, Right, let's have a look, David, see what it looks like. So get right in on Jen, let's have a look at it. That's it. Yeah, it's pretty damn good, really. So you've got coping saw, jigsaw, flappy disc on that. Jen, what are you going for? So. David, film that. Right, probably the most dangerous of all. 
She's gonna, <laughs> she's opting for the chainsaw. Coming close, David. Which are you going left or right? Right, come over here. <laughs> yeah, I thought I'm sorry. That's all we should probably let her use. Right. Turn it off. Right, let's have a look at Jen's <laughs> attempts. <laughs> John! John! Come here a minute. God's sake. Br bring your cork here a minute, John. Hang on. I can fix it. I think you can fix it, to be fair. Let's have a look, see if John can fix this. That was this. quite hard, you know. Yeah, tell me about it. Right, John. God. Let's have a look. Let's see what John can do with this now. John's a master of the cork gun. You might need a full tube, mate. <laughs> I'm going to hold that as though it were fixed at wall, John, yeah? I'm going to fix that. Let's see what you can do with that. Easy Let's just get that chainsaw off. Got off it. Time, <laughs> right, go on, hold it. You have to hold it. So I've got it, I've got it. So even if you're not that great at scribing, a tube of cork per scribe and see, look at that thing. Hang on, I've not finished. Go on, I, want I want to do top. Go on, every wit emulsion, you'll be good. I'm actually rushing this, can probably do it a bit better than that, but. Oh, <laughs> go on, go on, go on, it's not bad, it's not bad. <laughs> Looks like chewing gum. <laughs> well, in a minute, watch on, because I've not finished yet, watch. We've got a fat lane and tickle it round, it's coming now. See it? And you tickle it until it comes, you've John. Got, you've got to tickle it, that's the technique, if you press it hard. Now that, you know, it's getting there now, isn't it, look? Take a bit of time, but we'll leave it. Do you know what, Jen? I'm not wrong with that. I'm not wrong with that. If we only had a chainsaw, there's, we'd get by. There's, 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 plen it there now, there's plenty of guys out on site on price doing worse than that. Yes, yes. Right, another one we're going to go for now, which we've never, ever done before. It's a circular saw. Someone's going to have to hold this from a... Uh, stand that side. David, you might want to be over my shoulder. We've never we've never given this a shot before, but we'll see how this goes. There's <laughs> no set in depth for this. Have you got it? <laughs> Not bad, is it? That's huh? alright. Yeah, right. So with a bit of cork, they're all pretty good, aren't they? Right, that's us finished on this job. Um, what we're going to do now, we're going to clean the building down. We're going to get all these tools back in the van and we're going to give you a little walk around of everything we've done. I'll talk about how we built the job. Um, I'll talk about the processes we went through. We'll let have a look at the little grass on the roof as well. Um, and we'll show you inside as well. Right, I'm going to give you a little walk around now. So it's 4B3, but what we give the customer is 4B3 internally. It's slightly bigger than that, to be fair. Um, this is what we had before. And this is what we've got now. Right, so it's Hardy VL. It's a cement fibre board. Um, it's tongue and groove. It will look like this in 10, 15 years. They guarantee the colour um, for that. We've also put AstroTurf on the roof, which I'll show you a picture of now. Um, it looks lovely as well, does AstroTurf. Davey comes here, we'll see you behind there. I'll go around. Right, the customer wanted it square to the building. The fence is obviously running at a taper like that, so we've put it square. Metal, no maintenance cladding on the rear there. It's plastic coated as well. That'll never need touching. And we've backfilled this with some 20 mil gravel. We've got a gutter and down pipe there as well. We've riveted all the joints because it looks a lot nicer than the screws. And if David comes around this other side, Again, hardy VL to this elevation as well. You don't actually see this elevation, but you know, we, we've still put the hardy VL on because the customer, um, the customer's neighbours obviously are going to see it and it stops it looking like a container. There's a feel to the back as well. But again, this is colour, colour fast. It will like, they guarantee it for 10 to 15 years. It's a cement fibre board, hardy VL. We've got a two gang double outside stainless brush stainless steel socket there and to the front elevation we have got three meter bifolds again in anthracite grey express bifolds the leading manufacturer of bifolds in the country and we'll talk about the bifolds in a minute if david looks up he'll see some fire rated down lighters on there 
We've actually just washed this building down, that's why everywhere's wet. Right, so look at the glide on them. Let's talk about these doors. That is how your bifolds should glide. One finger operation, nice and easy and beautiful. Right, it lets the garden come into your garden room. And this customer has gone for the integrated blind option, which is a lovely little feature. Integrated blinds on all the panels. They'll never need touching again. You never need to clean them. They're not going to get damaged by your kids or your dog. Lovely little feature them. They are expensive, but they are nice. Right, so what we're going to do now is just open these up and let you dairy come in a little bit and have a look. Right, we fit a laminate floor. It's ready for the customer to skip. Um, to skim, it's already been skimmed to be fair. <laughs> it's ready for the customer to paint and he's already painted these two walls. The reason why he's painted this wall is so that we can get the two kilowatt heater on the wall there and he's not having to paint around it. John's concealed the wire in there, I showed you that. TV on the wall, YouTube, there's a guy showing you how to build one of these. We've got a little brush plate there, HDMI cable goes right up to the back of the TV. All the socket face plates are brushed stainless steel. And John's connected the internet to the house Again, as I said before, you have exactly the same speed there as you would have in the house. And the consumer unit, we've recessed it into the wall as well. Nice little feature, looks a lot tidier, that does as well. So there, there's your code, look, if you want to get your bifold doors, OGR rooms, five. Right, so if you want one of these, we have got some places this year. Um, it's quieting down for whatever reason, economic um, climate and stuff like that. But there are places if you want us to come and build you one of these garden rooms. And I can assure you that we build the best garden rooms in the country as i said before there's nothing to hide we show you them being built we show you every process and you can be sure of a beautiful fantastic build okay so please like and subscribe and don't forget we've been nominated for the yorkshire choice awards um we've the tickets already booked uh, tables already booked for that but if you could go on the description and give us a vote as well that'd be great and then um hopefully we'll get up on stage and win that prize so that's it um next i think we're going on to a five by three with an integrated storeroom so there's something a little bit different there as well and i'm going to try and show you a more detailed full build video of that as well so thanks very much and we'll see you next time